Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. We're going to be checking out the biggest lies told in history. So we've all been lied to. We've all been taught wrong things that don't exactly line up with real history. So we're going to find out, you know, a couple of these I might know. I know about like, uh, I know uh, George Washington is supposed to have chopped down a cherry tree or something with an ax and that turns out to not be true. Uh, I don't know what else. But anyways, we're going to find out together. Links in the links to the original video will be in the description section down below. As always, make sure you go check out the original channel. Show them some love. Hit like on their video. And we're going to check this out. We're going to find out what these biggest lies are told in history. From legends about George Washington to historical monuments, here are the biggest lies told in history. What historical monuments, I wonder? But first, we'd like to thank Atomic Blast Gaming for leaving us this comment on our 11 most iconic structures video. We're glad you enjoyed watching and leave us a suggestion on a video you'd like to see in the future and maybe we'll feature you. Well, if this is the best YouTube channel ever, mine's the second best. In an upcoming <laughs> video. Number 10, Columbus discovered America. Oh yeah, Many yeah, children yeah. will go to school and not question what their teachers will tell them when it comes to history. Yeah, this one I did know about. I didn't think about it off the top of my head, but yeah. He actually discovered, like, the, one of the Carib Caribbean islands, I believe it was. But the expression, history is written by the victors, has some validity to it. Sometimes there's undeniable evidence a moment in history happened, and sometimes the truth is kind of warped or misleading. For many oh, yeah. years, people were taught that Christopher Columbus discovered America in 1492. Why does he look but like Miss Kiff? For years, people were taught that Christopher Columbus discovered... Why does everybody look like Miss Kiff? There was another person that I did a reaction on. Uh, there was, or not a person, but just a video I did a reaction on. It was mentioned in somebody from back in the day, and it showed a picture, and it looked like Miss Kiff. There's a, he's a pro Twitch streamer, if you don't know who he is. Check it out, but that looks like Miss Kiff right there. That's crazy. Covered America in 1492, but this is extremely misleading, vague, and a downright lie. It's believed that America was originally settled by nomadic tribes crossing the Bering Land Bridge into Alaska tens of thousands of years ago. Well, yeah. And then we well, of course, we all know that. The George Washington story, though, is supposed to be the first European. We all know about the natives that's here. Tribes crossing the Bering Land Bridge into Alaska tens of thousands of years ago. And then we have evidence of Viking explorers such as Leif Erikson yep. crossing the Atlantic. There's all Yeah, Viking settlements in... Uh Somewhere in Canada, I think New Brunswick, perhaps. Also evidence of Vikings settling in Lonso Meadow in Newfoundland in the 11th century. Newfoundland, not New Brunswick, Newfoundland. So Christopher Columbus wasn't even the first European to cross the Atlantic. If anything, his voyages led to colonization, conquest of natives, and Spain getting rich. Number 9, Paul Revere. They didn't even point out the fact that he didn't even land in the continental like United States area. He landed in the Caribbean islands somewhere. They didn't even cover that part. Paul Revere is well known for his midnight ride, where he warned the American patriots that the British are coming, the British are coming, oh, yeah, which yeah, then yeah. allowed for an American victory in the Battle of Lexington and Concord. However, pretty much this entire story is false, and his famous quote would have been incorrect as well. Really? First of all, the most common name used for British soldiers at this time would have been regulars, and there was no need to say that they were British. He was sent on a mission to alert the presence of British arrival, but so were about 40 other people on horseback, and he was in a group with about two other men. He actually became overwhelmed by their presence, fell <laughs> off his horse, and was even detained temporarily by the Redcoats. The reality of what happened that night is less patriotic than the poem written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, so it probably is more enjoyable to teach this as a true account. Many believe Longfellow just simply picked Revere since it was easy to find words to rhyme with, such as near and here. Very interesting. Is there truth to that though? Like, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there is, but very interesting. I've never heard that one. That's okay. That's a good one. Number eight, 13 colonies. The 13 colonies of the United States. You hear it over and over again from your history teacher, but did you ever once ask them to actually count and name them all? It's easy to Good point. Where are they at? Which ones are they? Understand how to get this one mixed up because of the current states that made up the colonies before the Revolutionary War began. Delaware was actually never a separate colony, and that land that currently makes up this state was basically a county of Pennsylvania and was even a part of Maryland territory at some point. Okay. However, it was a part of Pennsylvania until the Revolutionary War began and was considered to be a lower county. 
It wasn't until 1776 that the government declared Delaware as an independent state from Philadelphia. So if your teacher ever refers to the 13 colonies before 1776, be sure to promptly correct them. Number so what does that mean? There was only 12? They didn't clarify it. Number seven, the Washington Cherry Tree. I knew George this one. Washington is certainly a man of legends. We see him all the time on the $1 bill, but how much do we really know about this guy? The separation of fact and fiction about the first president of the United States can often be blurred. You might have heard about the legend that states when he was six, he was given a hatchet as a gift, and he proceeded to chop down his father's cherry tree. It was at this moment, Washington confessed to his father that he cut it down and that he could never tell a lie. <laughs> However, this is a completely fabricated lie in history. And yeah, I heard about that. They just, they, it's just one of those things like to try to teach kids not to lie, I think. And the whole story was constructed by an early biographer by the name of Mason Locke Weems. Weems wanted George Washington to be portrayed as a role model for young Americans. The myth of Washington has endured for ages, probably because we find it to be a good story. Number six, the crossing of Delaware. This iconic painting has been a symbol of American bravery during the Revolutionary War and is in history books all across America. But is this an accurate depiction of George Washington crossing the Delaware River into Pennsylvania? I highly doubt it. I mean, is that really what that looked like? It's turbulent. First of all, it's turbulent and rocky as that water looks. They ain't just standing there like that. He would have fell down. It was painted by a German artist, Gottlieb Lutz, in 1851. So obviously, he wasn't there at the time. Right. The painting depicts George Washington standing tall in a tiny raft, making its way through tiny icebergs. But when the Delaware <laughs> River freezes, it tends to create more solid, large sheets of ice like we see in this image. Without criticizing too many small details, the little measly raft they're in is bogus, and Washington and his armies cross in transport boats known as Durhams. <laughs> These were constructed using iron ore and sturdy timber. Durham boats are about 40 feet long and didn't even have seats, so it's unclear why these people are sitting. Then we take a look over at the flag, and that's also wrong. This American flag wasn't used until a year later in 1777. Really? There's also no evidence that the guy holding the flag, James Monroe, was ever in the same boat with Washington. What it lacks in historical accuracy, it actually makes up for with national pride. <laughs> Number five, Van Gogh cut off ear. While in school, learning about famous artists, we all know that Van Gogh was simply a madman who sliced off his ear and mailed it to his lover, right? I didn't know that. I know Van Gogh's Dutch. I know that much. Who would inflict so much physical pain on themselves over an ex? After looking through quite a few letters, it seems more than likely that him and a friend got into a scuffle involving too much French wine and a sword. Van Gogh was certainly <laughs> no snitch and didn't want to report the incident that could potentially put his best friend in prison. Number four, the they're getting drunk on French wine and playing with swords and it, he don't want to rat out his friends. So it turns into a story of him being a crazy madman and cutting off his own ear. Okay. The Sphinx nose. How did the Sphinx lose its nose? Did it get a bad rhinoplasty or was it shot off while Napoleon was invading Egypt and he used the nose as target practice for his cannons? That's what I heard. I heard the Napoleon cannon target practice thing. The nose was gone centuries before Napoleon was even born. Napoleon was fascinated with Egyptology and sought to preserve Egypt's antiquities. Okay, so if, if that's true, then he didn't do it. The limestone used to construct the Sphinx eroded fairly quickly after a few thousand years had gone by. But don't forget, Egypt is a Muslim country where worshipping idols is not permitted. It's still a wonder how this monument is even here. Historical accounts from the 1400s. Good point. If it's a Muslim country and they can't worship idols, it is a good. It it is weird that it's still there. Um, cl clearly, it was put there before they were Muslim. It is not permitted. It's still a wonder how this monument is even here. Historical accounts from the 1400s say that religious leader Muhammad Sayyid Maldar destroyed the nose when he saw people worshiping the Sphinx as an idol. Oh, Number okay. three, Viking horned helmets. Archaeologists have a better chance of finding a unicorn than finding a horned Viking helmet. Even the yeah. football team, the Vikings, have horns on their helmet. Yeah, that one is completely false. I do, I did remember something about hearing about this. It was just like made it like maybe in a movie or something from the twenties, and it just kind of spiraled out of control from there. I don't know for sure. We'll find out. Corn than finding a horned Viking helmet. Even the football team, the Vikings, have horns on their helmet. 
This is just a modern day myth and an artist's portrayal of how Vikings actually looked while in battle. This yeah. portrayal began in the 1800s 1800s. when Scandinavian artists such as Maelstrom and Mary McGregor included this style of helmet like we see in this illustration of Leif Erikson discovering Vinland. Horn helmets did exist, but these were from over thousands of years ago during the Bronze Age and used for ritualistic religious ceremonies. Number 2. Okay. Stonehenge one of the biggest ancient mysteries in the world is certainly Stonehenge, and they've been standing in that formation for 5,000 years, right? Oh no, don't tell me this is a lie too. Could this all be some kind of cruel hoax? Historical records of the monument do date back to 1200 AD, but it's highly doubtful that they've been in the same position we see them today. A yeah. curator from Cambridge University quoted, Nearly all the stones we see today have been moved in some way and are standing in concrete. This image we see here shows Stonehenge in 1877 with wow. stones lean on each other. Many monuments around the world must be restored at some point. This photo here shows some type of restoration project going on in 1898 huh. with two men on top of a block that looks like it's being placed there with a crane. Then how's people going to go there and be getting like precise accurate like archaeological uh, like astronomical like measurements and stuff talking about how it lines up with the stars. People's moved it, people in the 1800s moved it like it might not even be in the same damn spot that it was a thousand years ago. It fell down and got replaced by people that don't have any clue why it was even there in the first place or where the blocks are supposed to go or what purpose they're supposed to serve. Then you fast forward to nowadays after it's been tampered with and messed with and fell down and re-put back together in possibly the wrong spot. And you got people like taking like measurements talking about it lines up with this and that. I don't know. This photo shows the crane picking up the block, and you can certainly tell this is a massive restoration project. Take a look at the photos and just let us know what you believe. Number one, first Thanksgiving. Number one. Sorry guys, American Eye has to ruin Thanksgiving for you too. And there's absolutely no truth to this one besides the feast itself, and what we celebrate couldn't be anything further from the truth. As a kid, you might have believed your teacher saying that Thanksgiving was a friendly celebration between Indians and pilgrims who came together and feasted on turkey legs and corn. I, I highly doubt it because they didn't get along back then. Sharing farming secrets. Thanksgiving was basically a celebration after a vengeful retaliation on Native Americans and it was celebrated around the same time each year. We won't get into too many details about this one, but if you know how history tended to go between European settlers and Native Americans, you can probably take a good guess. Anyways, don't yeah. let it keep you from enjoying stuffing and turkey, which also the pilgrims never ate. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Pilgrims didn't eat no stuffing, guys, what you thinking? So, biggest lies told in history i don't know if you guys are in europe watching you know are these anything that you've heard about right are these also lies that you've heard is it went you know across the world or is it just something that's been taught here in america let me know down below um make sure you hit like hit subscribe hit that notification bell if you want to make sure you don't miss out on any of my videos because otherwise you're not going to get the notifications youtube's weird like that so uh, till next time you guys have a super fun awesome day Take it easy.